What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another draft prospect. Today, we are talking about who could be the top linebacker off the board in this year's draft, Micah Parsons. So let's get it started. You no, know, I got a shout out, Dosa D, uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know, Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we're talking about some Micah Parsons in today's video. Continuing to go through some of the film. We did the Zayvon Collins and the Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa video. Koromoa, I'm sorry. It's Koromoa. I say more. I don't it's Moa. My I'm I'm my bad. I'm sorry. But I realized that after I was like done with the video. I was like, ooh, I'm saying his name. I'm pretty sure. Pretty wrong there. But it's okay. It, it's it's it happened, so we kinda gotta move on. But Micah Parsons is way easier to say. So so thank you, Micah, for, for doing that. I know you didn't pick your name, but it's okay. Why, why, why does this happen in the beginning of videos? Why do they get off topic like this? It's I, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. Either way, we're talking about Micah Parsons in today's video. Before we get into this video, we did touch on what Micah Parsons said about joining the Detroit Lions potentially and what it would be like to uh, get to learn from a guy like Chris Spielman. He talked about his impact that he could have on him as a player and how great that would be for him. We did the video on that. If you guys saw that, where we had like the, you know, the weird outside thing. Anyway, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But then Micah Parsons said this. And uh, Jason Cabinda actually tweeted, who is the Lions fullback right now, of course. Of course, Nick Bond is still on the roster. We'll see who wins that role. Last year, though, it was Cabinda. And Cabinda put this tweet out. You should always be in competition with yourself and with those around you. Just never make the competition with those around you more important than the competition, competition between you and you. I think that's a great quote. But then Micah Parsons has something to say about this. That's why it's that's why it me versus you. Okay, now I know it's supposed to be it. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, come on, like we got an English right. No, it's fine. You know what? I can't even say that. I can't spell. Uh, that's why it's me versus you this offseason. Whatever drill you want. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. So, boom. What do you make of that? Nothing? Something? Who knows? Okay, but I thought I'd at least throw it in there. So, we're continuing to do this. Obviously, the draft is coming super, super close. So, we're going to have to keep talking about some of these top prospects. That way, we were just prepared because I don't know what direction the lines are going with this. And they could definitely trade back too. So, I want to know about all the options that are available. And I spent a lot of time uh, watching prospects pretty much every day. So, I'm starting to get a good feel of a lot of players. I got a lot of notes taken, which I'm going to throw onto doseofdn.com. And hopefully, by the time we're like a week away from the draft, it's uh, pretty deep. We're with a lot of players on there to look at that that's kind of the plan so we can start putting together big boards like week the week before the draft because that'll be a really fun time and that's what i'm excited for but today we're talking about some micah parsons i don't know what really happened and what didn't happen in on uh, the off the field stuff so that's not what this video is about this video is about the on the field here's how i look at it if i'm the lions and i do my research my background and i come to the conclusion that i'm worried about his character i'm not drafting him anywhere whether that's trade back or set of seven it doesn't matter to me in, th in that such scenario if i was worried about the character it wouldn't be like oh we traded back now his character is cool like nah that's not how it is if i'm worried about it i'm just not drafting him in the words of dan campbell we don't want turds here so uh they'll have to check it out figure it out i can't tell you anything more than what reports are out there what's legit what's not there's always stuff like this you remember quit that cephas uh he had stuff dropped so you never really know here what's real and what's not but regardless uh there is a lot of stuff out there so we'll have to see what happens we'll see how teams feel about that i guess when draft time comes around but we're gonna focus on the on the field stuff all right that's what we're gonna break down today we're gonna break it into different categories run defense pass rush and coverage but before we get into that just do a quick little background on, on Micah Parsons. Micah player, Parsons playing for Penn State checks in at six foot three, two hundred and forty five pounds, which is just a tremendous size for a linebacker, especially in this class because there's a lot of smaller linebackers. So two forty five sets him apart from a lot of other guys instantly. But then he has the athleticism of some of those two hundred thirty pound linebackers, which makes him rare. Just, just that alone makes him a rare player because he brings both size and speed, which not a linebacker, a lot of linebackers bring both. Heck, there's guys smaller than him that look like they can't move, and he can move, and he's uh, on the bigger side for linebacker coming out of this class so uh, definitely impressive not as big as Haven, but definitely has some size and it allowed him to be a very versatile player now fortunately he did opt out of 2020 so we didn't get to see him last year uh, but statistically, he put up some really good numbers. In 2019, he had 109 total tackles, including five sacks and four forced incompletions, 28 completions on 48 targets. And those are always kind of weird, those numbers when you're playing the linebacker spot because he did drop it to a lot of zone. Sub 90 pass rating. So solid numbers, I guess you could say there, uh, just over 60% completion percentage. But now let's get into what I took away from on the film. So I went through, I've watched more games, but uh, just now I actually went and got done watching four of his games, all the plays of those games getting to see the all 22 in it and it really helps you see the entire field here and here's what i got so we're gonna break it into categories let's start off with the category that he is 
really the best known for, and that is run defense. Run defense is where he's one of the highest graded players in the country. If you use Pro Football Focus, they will say that he, he is the second best run defender that they've ever looked at. He's also the third best tackler this season coming out of the draft. So uh, clearly pretty good there in terms of grades. Out of 10, I'll say it right now, I give him a 9 out of 10 here. I do think he's not perfect, and I'm going to explain why, but he does so many things well. And, and you can just see as soon as you watch him how dominant he really can be as a run defender. And he is dominant. Uh, uh, but he has flashes of just complete disaster for an offense where he just wrecks havoc and it's like, oh my gosh, that's he's just a problem. He's like a natural disaster. But at the same time, even when that's not going on, he can still be impactful from down to down because of his versatility. His size allows him to be extremely versatile. I actually sometimes like him on the outside as an outside backer, you know, outside of the offensive tackles a lot more sometimes on the edge. Penn State's able to move him around at different spots to keep him involved based on matchups, based on how they want to use him as a pass rusher as well. But we'll get to that in a second. But as as a run defender, you can put him anywhere and he can kind of do anything, okay? He gives you great size to take on offensive linemen. And a lot of linebackers in this class really can't do that. Now, yes, is he, now, is he dominant against offensive linemen? No, but he can take them on and he could definitely fill his lane and fill his gaps. He's very willing as well. I mean, he's, he's willing to get in there and get dirty, you know, take some monster hits just to open up plays for teammates. So not a ton of linebackers in this class that can do that. But then he also has the athletic side that makes him so special. And this is the sideline and sideline. This is the rangy speed. And what you're getting with these 220, 230 pound linebackers is that, but sometimes you don't get the ability to take on, you know, offensive linemen and play extremely well between the tackles, but he can do both. He moves so well in his pro day is really what sold it for a lot of people, but you can just see it on the film. He ran a 4-3-9-40, which was in the 99th percentile for his position. He also had a three-cone drill time of 6.94 seconds, which was in the 79th percentile, and a broad jump of 126 inches, which in the 93rd percentile. The one place he lacked in his pro day was his bench press reps at 19. That was definitely low for Micah Parsons, considering his build, and the fact that he came in seemingly bigger than he than, than we initially thought that he was going to weigh. So 19 bench press reps wasn't the best there, but clearly you could see the explosiveness and athleticism in his game and the fact that he has that paired with the size is what makes him special when you have him between the tackles his sideline his sideline speed is incredible and like I said his ability to really clog lanes and just be a disaster his height I think really helps him a lot because it helps him see into the backfield sounds weird but I think Zayvon Collins also benefits from this when you watch Zayvon you'll see him blow up some plays in the backfield and kind of just run through the hole the running back goes through I think his height allows him to see everything at six foot three sometimes he can see over the offensive line and kind of peek in the backfield and be able to guess what kind of the holes the running back is going through and uh, he can meet the running back in the backfield and fly through there but plus his athleticism allows him just to tack down and he is not afraid there's no hesitation I mean he'll run in there and uh, he'll take some monster from offensive linemen but he's trying to blow things up and he will blow things up he can throw off blocking assignments because he can get in the backfield so fast that once the first blocker missed him everybody's you know out of whack just trying to pick him up and once that happens then it's a complete mess on the offensive line because people are no longer taking their responsibility and man blocking scheme offensive linemen can really struggle to keep up with him because he can his agility he kind of just sidesteps but in the zone blocking scheme that's where he's extremely disruptive because he can beat that zone blocker that's working towards his area before he can get to that spot and he's in the backfield and there's no one there to account for him and then it just throws all the offensive linemen out of the whack because they're trying to adjust and pick this guy up and now everybody seems to be free so that's the kind of disaster that he can leave on your offense because he can be so quick in the backfield and he's not one of those players that'll flash a highlight and then you'll forget about him for two lives because they move him around so much to get him involved based on matchups but not only that he averaged over eight tackles a game so yes he was always involved on the field and you can see it just even if he's not making the tackle opening up lanes for other teammates because he's such an attacking linebacker that was his fit that's what he's expected to have a fit of going into the next level because he's an attacking linebacker he's downhill he wants to play downhill he wants to use that speed and athleticism and willingness to open things up and that will lead to huge plays but also if it's not a big play it leaves lanes open for other linebackers to follow through because he takes the lead blocker and sometimes that's your responsibility now where does he still lack though as a run defender why is it not higher he lacks as a run defender because he can get slightly over aggressive I understand in attacking defense sometimes your role is just to blitz right off the snap and you're trying to get to the backfield it makes sense but there's other times where I feel like he's slightly a little over aggressive and because of that he'll take the wrong hole where if you would have just gave it one more second he could have picked the right one and you'll see a lot of flashes of him meeting the running back in the backfield really running through his hole for him but there are times when he's just a tad too aggressive and he gets himself out of positions too early and then he's stuck within the offensive line the only thing to me he's lacking doesn't really miss tackles he's one of the best tacklers in his class rarely has missed tackles like i said he had over 100 tackles you know last year he had a sub five percent missed tackle percentage a big hits too he can lay big hits too he can make arm tackles
tackles. I would say every once in a while, you know, they'll slip out of the arm tackles, but I mean, he's a very, very sure tackler. Here's an example of one of those missed tackles. He does a pretty good job of clogging the lane here. Probably could have maybe taken this head on. But you see he kind of gets his arm stuck so he's not able to really wrap up. And this is when it runs through. But not many missed tackles. Misses the first attempt. He doesn't give up on the play. If he'll push him out of the way, he'll try to track him back down and make the tackle. So ultimately, he's just a really good run defender. It's clearly his biggest strength. And you got to believe if you add him to your defense, one, he can fit in a lot of different defenses. But two, he's going to completely upgrade your run defense right away from the inside and the outside. Because I think on the edge, what he's so so good at that people don't bring up is how well he can actually set the edge as a run defender. He can set the edge very aware of read option plays where he has eyes on both the running back and the quarterback and he'll make sure that okay the running back doesn't have football now I can go with the quarterback before he jumps on uh, the other way and leaves the gap or responsibility completely open. It's also super quick so it makes it very difficult for tight ends offensive tackles to pick him up off the snap if he's playing up against the line so he can beat you to the backfield and blow up a run play just like that as well and of course if you play him on the weak side he's fast enough to run plays down so he's just just so dynamic as a run defender it's his biggest strength there's not many weaknesses here aside from the occasional over aggression getting yourselves out of spots and uh, leaving some lanes open sometimes that's by design because the next linebacker is supposed to take the hole after he takes the lead blocker and he's supposed to attack down right away but other times i think he's just a little bit over antsy and it gets him out of position but that's the only reason he doesn't have a higher grade here but it's a nine out of ten so that's his best strength next up though we have as a pass rusher now as a pass rusher i think this is where he probably gets the most hype from an 8.5 out of 10 here he's a good pass rusher because he has the two things that it takes to be really a dominant linebacker as a pass rusher okay for most most of them size and speed you combine those two things together you have a problem for offensive linemen you have a problem for tight ends and you got a problem for running backs you got a problem for running backs because he's too big he's 245 pounds running backs have trouble picking him up you have a problem for tight ends because a little bit of both he's big and he's fast so he's really tough to keep up with off the edge that's why i like him sometimes more on the edge because tight ends really struggle with him and on the inside against offensive linemen he's too fast now, size there can help him to hold his own, but he is too fast for offensive linemen. He gets into a situation where he's not winning by speed or power, which is usually what you win by. As a linebacker, when you're sending on the blitz, for the most part, your job is to just, you know, get there. You're sending extra bodies. It's about speed, and it's about just being overly physical and too big for running backs and tight ends. However, for him, if it turns into a situation where he's more of a pass rush move guy, so if an offensive lineman is able to pick him up and he doesn't blow by and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, his first pass rush move usually isn't successful. He usually doesn't attack with great pass rush moves either. It's his second effort, whether that's spinning off, whether that's just, you know, taking a sidestep, whatever that may be, it's the second effort that allows him to get to the backfield. But of course, by that time, he can be late to make a play in the backfield, depending on how many rushers they're bringing. So for him, he's usually just trying to win with size and speed. Uh, but if he does get picked up, there is a nice second effort there. He doesn't give up on the play usually. Sometimes he'll realize, okay, I'm not going to get back there. I'm going to sit back and take the running back out of the backfield and just be prepared for that. He still does have to seem enough speed and size here that if you want to just play the edge role you could probably do that and he'd be really good at it and he also was a defensive lineman in high school so you know he might be able to you know pull something out of his hat there that he's not showing us right now but maybe if he could just develop some quick pass rush moves to get to the backfield he could be you know really all the way there what he wins worth right now is size speed which is what most pass rushers win with at the linebacker position but i think he could add a little bit more to that i mean if you watch pass rushers from lines last season when our linebacker splits they didn't throw in pass rush moves they were just trying to run by guys that's usually how they all win but for him he could throw into pass rushers and he could be really scary but he's already got the size and speed there so just those two things alone makes him tough and he can finish off the quarterback and he has that closing burst to run you down so once he gets back there you're not going to run outrun him to the sideline he's going to run you down it's just a matter of you know are you going to throw the ball away first? Because he's going to run you down. It's just that simple. And he doesn't miss a lot of tackles. So, Max of so far is probably the most complete pass rusher from the linebacker or off ball position because he can win with size and speed. Like, he's faster than Zavin, but he also has that thick build like Zavin does so that running backs still can't pick him up. They really struggle, and tight ends don't like it either. And he's really quick as well. Zavin has a size, but he's not always super quick. He's not. Koromoa, Koromoa quick, but he also has that strength. So if he doesn't win with speed, he can back that up with strength. So he has both and that's just, whew, man, he's scary back there. He had five sacks in 2019, which is uh, actually really good production. Just not as dominant as I think he could be. I think he could add a little bit more to tweak that and make it better. Um, but I think for the most part, he's he's got the two things they need for a great pass rusher out of linebacker position. And finally, coverage. Now, I think coverage is probably the most underrated spot of his game. And I think the reason that happens is because the other team, two things he does so well, that you have to push something down his game. And I think it's clear it's not his strength. 
but it's not bad. You have to understand what his role is. And once you understand what his role is and what it will be at the next level, you can then start watching what he's doing. And at that point, you realize he's not a bad coverage guy. He's just a little bit limited here. So what is he like in cap coverage? Well, he doesn't drop into man coverage. They, they, they rarely dropped into man coverage for Penn State. And if you watched, when he did drop into man, it was two things. He would either take the running back out of the backfield or he would take a tight end downfield. Now, his athleticism allows him to flip his hips and run. So he can run seam routes with you all day long. Out of breaks, yeah, his change of direction isn't very good. So for the most part, they ran zone from their linebackers. So their linebackers would drop in a zone. So asking them to line up against a slot receiver, I don't think I even saw that once on his film ever try to do that. I don't think I ever saw that. They don't ask him to do that. Tight ends, running backs, that can be fair game. I don't know how good he'll look at the next level because he doesn't have that many man coverage snaps. He could surprise me and be incredible at man coverage, which would just be crazy. But he has the athleticism there. His change of direction, though, seems to be sort of sluggish in zone. So I have to believe he wouldn't be tremendous there and there's probably a reason they don't ask him to do that but clearly when you're six foot three 245 that's probably going to be tough to keep up with slot receivers right if you're a jeremiah wusu koromoa yeah if you're built 226 one you can keep up with slots he's not going to be able to do that at a high level but he can take the running backs and tight ends and do that he can run the seam and he can slip out with the running back because he can cover that area now, here's where he plays a lot. Zone coverage. He drops into zone coverage. It's very, I think, very underrated as a zone coverage guy because I think the one thing I notice is that how well he's able to read the quarterback's eyes, which is what your task is. Your linebacker, your task is to read the quarterback's eyes when you drop into zone and you follow their quarterback's eyes, right? You just try to get in those passing lanes. That's really your job there. But for him, what he does well is he's able to usually keep tabs on his man the man in his area, but also watch the quarterback. I noticed that and it was actually kind of impressive to see it. I saw one great example against Iowa where he kind of, you know, you can see him kind of keep peeking back knowing and where the other options are. For example, if they try to stack him where there's one going underneath and one going behind him, he tries to keep, you know, a little bit of a eye on both guys while still watching the quarterback. Sometimes linebackers just watch the quarterback strictly. And at that point, they're not even, you know, they have no idea what, what's going on around them. So yes, they can follow the quarterback's eyes, but a good quarterback looks them off. They're not even going to be near the play. For the most part, though, he actually does a really good job of keeping tabs, and I think it's because he's done it so much. Because they don't play man, he's had to really just refine his craft as a zone coverage guy. His height is a big plus, and just like Zavin in this way, a guy at six foot three can really clog passing lanes. It's really tough because he just gets in the way. Long arms, he's tall. If he gets himself out there, it's really it, it really closes up a window that a quarterback can throw the ball. Plus, if he jumps up, I'm gonna that's a it's a huge radius that he's taken away for the quarterback to throw the ball. So just that alone sometimes causes him to look away, even in man coverage. They would look his direction. But if he's covering a running back, they couldn't even see the running back sometimes. So they just go a different direction. You know, he's athletic. Now, he doesn't look as fast in zone coverage as he does as a run defender. As he is a run defender. Run defender, he looks comfortable. He's attacking. Zone is less attacking, right? You're dropping. You're trying to feel things. And he's less fast. He's less sure of himself. He's slightly hesitant. And uh, sometimes it leads to be sort of slow. But you also keep in mind what his roles are. He doesn't usually tend to go too far outside the tackles when he's dropping in zone. He does drop with a lot of depth. He can drop 15, 20 yards easily because he's so athletic, but he doesn't drop too far to the outside. And I don't, I think that's a lot of the scheme is that that's not a responsibility. He's keeping the middle of the field. That's the responsibility is to cover the middle of the field, but he doesn't, wasn't tasked too much to drop to the outside. So not tasked a lot to drop the outside and didn't play much man coverage and never I saw a lineup against a slot and cover him down the field. Tight ends, yes. Running backs, yes, out of the backfield, but I'd never saw a lineup against a slot cover him man-to-man -man coverage so there's going to be slightly limitations or i wouldn't even say that there are limitations right now but he does have the athleticism to potentially improve upon it there there is the athleticism there so it's not like he can't ever do it there's certain linebackers that are so slow it's like yeah he's probably not going to be able to play man coverage so that's how good in zone can we get him but for him he does have the athleticism where maybe with a lot of work at it he could become a uh, very formidable man coverage guy and that's not to say that he can't be right now I think he's actually pretty good at man coverage against tight ends and running backs. He's going to ask to do it a ton. So clearly, you know, they try to play to some strengths there, putting him in zone. Another thing in coverage is I always look for read and react. Definitely does it, but he does have a tendency to be slightly late on screens. And I think what happens here is from my 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 view, he's not attacking. So he's not close up to the offensive line. So since he's dropping in his zone, he's dropping back right away. What I think happens there is he's watching the quarterback's eyes, keeping tabs on what's around him. But at the same time, now he's not watching the offensive line. So he doesn't always recognize when the offensive line is kind of like not letting not blocking anybody then they release he recognized that sometimes late now his speed allows him to recover but sometimes he's late there and a blockers can put him out of position because you know he's a little bit late to the party he's pass rushing when he's blitzing 
He actually does a really nice job of watching the running back as he blitzes. Really nice job here. This is what good linebackers do, I've noticed, is when they blitz, they also kind of keep tabs on that running back to make sure he's not running out. And if he does leak out, they can slide over to it. Or if he can't get to the quarterback, backs up, looks for the running back, and leaks out. When he's pass rushing, he's good at that. But when he's dropping, he uh, tends to just watch the quarterback's eyes and what's around him and not the offensive line. And he's unaware until it's a little bit late of the screen. And he's not able to go over there and make a big play on the screen. So uh, it's all about the athleticism then to close that down down with his silent side speed and it's there so we can uh, but it can be him a little bit late to an offensive lineman can get him in position they want and finally like I said his change of direction seems to be slightly sluggish compared to a run defender but I think it's kind of just the nature of the position I also think it's clearly not where he's the most comfortable but he can do it I mean it's de it's definitely like not a weakness it's not a weakness it's just not a strength I mentioned earlier with run defender you know sometimes being overly aggressive where he's jumping on lanes early sometimes that can do that to him on play action too usually on the shotgun where he takes one first step in and then he's got to try to work back but at that point, if it's a quick slam behind him, it can get over his hands. There's one like he completely, he just missed it, you know, because he just took the first step forward. And it's like, ah, oh, man, he took that first step forward because they're trying to play so aggressive. And now you're just slightly out of position and uh, not able to make that play. So, uh, you know, if, if he stays a little bit, I think, more patient as a linebacker, he could really, really improve. Of course, unless the play is designed for him to attack and go downhill right off the snap, then at that point, he's going to be dangerous. If you had a big sum he struggles with, it's that, but he's not struggling. He's just not his strength, right? I mean, he's good. He's solid. He's actually above average to me yet. That's why I gave him a 7 out of 10. It's just not his strength. And uh, so far, he has been slightly limited. So we'll see at the next level what you can turn him into. But he has the athleticism to potentially be more than that. He hasn't found a way to come up with plays. He has had three dropped interceptions. So he's got himself in position. But he has had three dropped interceptions. He does have four forced incompletions because he will lay the, lay the boom if a slant or something like that is coming by his face. But he hasn't been able to make plays. He hasn't been able to finish plays. Clearly, the guy does not have great hands. So three dropped interceptions, you know, not able to finish off those. And clearly, if you have three interceptions, that's going to drop that pass rating you a lot way down. If people saw three interceptions, if they saw two interceptions, they'd be like, wow, he's good in coverage. Throw a couple of coverage numbers at you here. If if you're looking at Micah Parsons' 2019 season, that's the last time we saw him play, he allowed a 65% completion percentage. Compare that to Zayvon Collins, who, yes, played in less games, but allowed a 73% completion percentage, okay? And Zayvon Collins is known to be the best zone, one of the best zone coverage guys. The difference is with Zayvon Collins, he was able to come up with those interceptions. The one that hit his hands, he was able to come up with it. Not only that, if you look at some interceptions, it's just being in the right place, right time. Ball tips near he makes the crab. That's that's really good for linebacker. That's what it's about, being in the right place, putting yourself in position to have an opportunity. He's done that. He just hasn't finished off the play. That's really what he's lacking here. He's allowing a lower completion percentage, yes, in less games, but then David Collins. And even Owusu Koromora, now I know he's lining up at slot, so it's a different responsibility. He allowed a 62% completion percentage compared to, to, compared to uh, Micah Parsons, 65. The guy can definitely play zone. He just hasn't came up with the plays that are there, and he hasn't been able to finish off those to really lower that pass rating and make his coverage grade go up. But even still, PFF gives him a way above average coverage grade. That's up to a 24 and a half out of 30. Definitely a very talented prospect. I think he's player alone worth the seventh pick if that's the direction that you want to go. If you want to go linebacker for whoever that would be. Lions trade it back. And again, check character stuff checks out. This could be a really strong option for them. I think he's very scheme versatile for whoever picks him up. Could uh, fit him in there somehow. He can play all over the field. I've seen him line up all a strong side linebacker, weak side linebacker, middle linebacker. I've seen him line up on the edge. He just plays those roles. Doesn't line up at slot corner though, but he can play all of those roles. So Micah Parsons is very talented. He is my number one linebacker in terms of just on the field. I have Zavin behind him and I have uh, Wusu Koromora uh, close behind Zavin. Some really good linebackers in this class, no question about it, but uh, I think Micah is the best in my opinion. Micah's definitely one of my favorite on-field players in this year's draft. There's, there's no doubt about that. And it, I've really liked him for a while, but yeah, I mean, as I continue to watch, there's just so much things I like about him, and I think he just stands apart from a lot of other guys in this class with what he's able to offer and bring to the table. Also, uh, you know, he's been talking some Lions stuff recently, so uh, yeah, it's interesting. But again, the off-the-field stuff, yeah, that could, we'll see, we'll see what that turns into. It will dictate some things. We'll see how teams react to that when it's draft time. So, let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.